So let's say that I have some information that someone has given me. Let's say the information looks like this. It's, there's a 12. I'm going to say that the information is being fed to me in this direction. And then behind the 12, maybe there's a 15. And then a 5. And then maybe a 13. A 17. There's going to be more stuff over here. So the first number I have, I'm getting from my stream here is a 12. I need to save the 12. So we're gonna build a binary search tree. So the 12 is going to be our root. So I'm gonna take the 12 and I'm gonna make that the root. And now the next number, I've saved that. So now the next number that comes along is 15. And I ask a simple question. I come over here and I say, is the 15 larger or smaller than the 12? And in this case, it's larger. So I'm gonna to go to the right. And now it turns out there's nothing here. So I have an empty space where I can park the 15. So I just parked the 15 here. Now you'll notice that every one of these has an arrow. I'm not going to draw the arrows anymore, but they're there. But just out of laziness, I'm just going to draw a line like that. Now the next number that comes along is five. I've saved the 15. I got a five. I come over here again and I say it's five greater than or less than 12, less. So now I have a slot open over here. Once again, I keep drawing the arrow there. And now I put the five in. Now I get to the 13. So it comes over here, it says greater than or less than 12. Greater than 12, third 12, comes over here. Now, but this, this place is occupied. So now I ask the same question again, greater or less than 15? Less than. So now I add it over here like that. I'm going to ask you to take out a piece of paper now. I'm going to give you a stream of numbers, and I want you to build the tree that you get when these numbers are entered into the binary search tree. So now we're going to look at this tree, and we're going to make some uh, observations about it. And the first thing you notice is it's not a linear structure, right? So now we want to look at how long will it take for us to find stuff, how long will it take for us to insert stuff, and how long will it take for us to delete stuff. That's the whole game of a database. So first question is, how long will it take for us to find stuff? I'm looking for the number nine. How long is it going to take? Yes, miss? Log n. It's going to take log n, assuming this tree is reasonably balanced, right? Now, keep in mind that we could have been really unlucky, and we could have entered this in such a way that in a worst case scenario, what would this tree degrade to if we were really unlucky about this order? Yes, sir. It could turn into a linked list. It would be unusual, but it could happen. Later on in another class, we'll show you how to keep the tree balanced perfectly. But today we'll just use dumb luck to keep it balanced. So here it's gonna be log n where basically we have n no uh, we have uh, n nodes. It's going to be finding the the item is going to be dependent on the height of the tree. You see that, right? So because of the nonlinear nature, every time we go down one level, we double the number of nodes that we're processing, and so we're not having to look at a lot of these nodes because every time we drop a level, all the other nodes in the subtree are being ignored, and so now the search is taking o. Of lo so search is now taking O of log N. Now let's talk about insertion. I need to insert a node into this tree. How am I going to do it? How long is it going to take? Let's say I need to insert the number 99 into the tree. What's going to be the process? How expensive is it going to be? Am I going to have to look through every node to figure out where I'm going to have to insert it? What am I going to do? Yes, sir. Just look how many nodes that are bigger or less than it. So once again, it's going to be dependent on the height of the tree. And so you can see here that the insertion, once again, is going to be log n. Now, deletion is a little trickier. Deletion has two parts to it. What are the two parts to the deletion? Mr. Mariak? You have to find it. Got to find it. How long is that going to take? Log in, and then the actual deletion part, how much long do you think that'll take, sir? Okay. O of K, very good. So once again, it's O of log N plus O of K. Let's put those two together, you get O of log N. So delete here will also be O of log N. So 
Deleting in the binary search tree is the only hard thing about binary search tree. And it's so hard that I'm gonna spend almost an entire class on it the next time that we're together. But all the other operations like insertion and finding and everything, they're so simple. I'm gonna just walk you through it later today. Are we all good? But the deletion, he's right. Deletion is hard. You can see that if I have to delete this nine, I got a mess on my hands, especially if there are nodes here and here and more built up subtrees, not so obvious what to do. So I'm gonna go new project and I'm gonna call this the BST. Okay, so this is gonna be a brand new project for me. And I'm gonna call this the BST class. There's my BST. And um, okay, there we go. All right, so um, as we did last time, we're going to have to um, create a node structure that's gonna hold our stuff. And we could use just integers or decimals, but I'd like to start off with it generic. And so we're gonna use T here. And uh, this time we need to put a restriction on T while I'm flushing this out. Maybe you and your partner can think about what restrictions do we have to put now on the classes that can be stored in a binary search tree? These restrictions did not exist for a regular binary tree. And in here, inside, we're going to do private static class. Uh, uh, we're going to call, I'm going to call it BST node this time. And uh, this also takes a T. And um, we're going to have private T value and private BST node T left and private BST node T right. And uh, we're gonna need a constructor, uh, two string here. I think that should be all we need for our node. And uh, we're building a BST class so I would like you to, uh, you can work with a partner on this class or you can work solo if you wish. Uh, first thing we have to figure out is what kind of, um, what kind of attributes are we gonna need in our binary search tree? Uh, let's see, discuss with your partner while I hunt down a volunteer. Uh, do I need any, what do you think would be some good attributes for my binary search tree? The root, yes, sir. So what data type should that be? T node root, I think that's good. Any other, sir? I don't think so either. So let's keep going, we got that. And now we're going to create a constructor for the binary search tree. Very good. The root is probably already gonna be null just from the Java virtual machine, but we'll make it clear to the user that we want to initialize the tree to be a null. And now we're going to create some methods here. And we're gonna create a method that the user can use uh, called insert. And here, now, remember that the user doesn't know anything about nodes. They only know about values that they want to store. They, they want to store information and retrieve information. That's what the user is about. So the insert method is going to look like this, and you're going to have to write it. Now, in order to write it, um, we're going to need to use some tricks. And uh, I'll get back to this insert in a minute. I want to go over another uh, method which will be a little bit more descriptive, easier to start with. I want to create a method called min, which will return the minimum value in the tree. And we're going to write this method two different ways today. We're going to write it iteratively using a loop, and then we're going to write it the more popular way for trees, which is recursively. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go public. And the first way we're going to write it is that we're going to write it using a loop. We're gonna use a loop. Now I want you to imagine a tree. It could be a tree like this, right? It doesn't have to be integers. And we want to find the minimum, the, the, the letter that's to the farthest left in the alphabet. In this case, it would happen to be the letter A. Uh, now, um, uh, 
let's say that it's a binary search tree and uh, we want to find the min. What would be a good algorithm for finding the min? You discuss with your partner now. Okay. So let's see here. Mr. Mariak, sir, what would be a good algorithm for finding the minimum in a binary search tree? Keep going left. We agree with that, yes? Okay. So what we're going to do is the first solution we're going to have to this problem is we're going to do it iteratively. And so what I mean by that is that we're going to use a loop to do it. So we need to do some stuff here, and then we're going to have a while loop. And then we're going to have some stuff here. And then we're going to finally return some stuff here like that. That's what I want to I want to try and flesh that out. So now remember, this is a method that's inside our binary search tree class. So we have direct access to this attribute called root. And that might come in handy, don't you think? And now what I want to know is what should we do with all this? There's some code that goes in there. And we have to try and figure out how to do all this. So you work with your partner to try and figure out how to write this method now. Can anyone think of any edge cases that we should consider? Mr. Mario, do you have an edge case for us, sir? Okay, what does that mean? Tree is empty. What do you think would be a reasonable course of action there, sir? We could throw an exception or we could maybe print in a message and leave quietly, something like that. But Throwing an exception is not a bad idea either. We'll just keep that in mind in the back of our minds while we're working on this method. So we just want to make sure we keep going left here. So we're going to be moving along on this tree. So we need some sort of pointer to tell us where we are. And um, I'll give you a hint, sir. We're going to go here and we're going to go current. And we're going to set that up to be initially something. What should we start off at? We're going to start it off with being the root like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do what Mr. Mariak said about handling a corner case uh, or edge case as it's called. So if tree is empty, uh, we're going to say if current equals null. Uh, we could also say if this root dot equals null, that would also work. Uh, what, what do we say? Well, let's just print a message. Okay, and um, so uh, Mr. Amrani, what, what are we gonna do now? I think you had said it, we're gonna keep going left. Oh, that's right. Okay. So you can see that this is how we would do this using a loop. Now, we don't usually process trees using loops because even though it might be fairly easy in this case, it's usually much easier to process it recursively. And to process it recursively, what we're going to do is we're going to write a recursive method. Now, this method in this format here is not easy to recurse because what we want to do when we recurse is we want to move the root pointer along to some other node as we're recursing. So what we need to do is we need to pass the root as a, as a parameter to the method that's going to recurse. But we don't want the user to have to notice that because the user doesn't care about recursion. They just want an answer. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to, I'm going to comment all this out because we're not going to need it right now. Oops. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to have this method call a different method. So I'm going to just say return get min, and then I'm going to pass it this dot root. And so what's happening here is that this get min is calling a different get min, and that's the one that we're going to write next. That's the recursive one. So I'm going to write it right on top of it here. And this one, strangely, should I mark it public? It's going to be private because I don't want the user calling this one. This is just for my internal use. So I'm going to mark this private T getman. And then I'm going to put in here BST node root. Now, one thing that might be bothering you right now is why do I have to pass the root when the root is an attribute? I should be able to get it directly. 
Can anyone tell me why I'm passing it? Yes, Mr. Orispayev. It changes. It's not the root of the tree I'm interested in. It's the root of the subtree that's taking place with the recursion. So you can see here that this root is not always going to be the root of the tree. It's going to be the root of the subtree. And so now what I'd like you to do is try and figure out how would this work if you're given uh, a pointer, if you're given a pointer to a node, how would you recurse down the tree until to get to the far left as possible? Please take a few minutes now and work on that with your partner. What do we do if root is null? Probably want to print some sort of message here and then return the null, like you said. So I think we should just copy this code here, maybe put it in there. And otherwise, what do we want to do? We want to keep going left. Is it equal or not equal? What'd you put? Turn. What are we gonna return? Okay, like that. Okay, and I think I need to do this again. Okay. And if we get down here, what should we do? Okay, that's very good, Mila. So you can see here, uh, that's basically gonna be our recursive structure. We're gonna keep going left as far as we can. Uh, what have we done so far? We've done the uh, node here and, uh, oh, right here. Oh, okay, here. Oh, okay, I, and I forgot a two string here, by the way. Uh, look over here now. Uh, we're building this binary search tree and uh, we have a generic in here. A question for you. Can I put any old objects in here? Can I put dogs, cats, um, people? in here in a binary search tree i could put them in a binary tree but what's different about a binary search tree versus a binary tree we have to kind of figure out how to go which ones go ahead of others or, or or less than so in this particular example it was obvious that you know the letters are in an order and when we had integers back in the room it was obvious which one goes to the right and which one goes to the left if i was to use like some generic p person object it wouldn't be clear necessarily which one is bigger than the other, right? So my question is this now, what property does T have to have that will allow it to be sorted? Please discuss with your partner. It has to be comparable. So what I need to do is I need to put a restriction on T here to make sure that only comparable objects are inserted into this tree. Because later on when I go to do my insert and I go to check to see if one goes before the other, I'm not going to be able to do that if the object itself uh, is not sortable, right? So what I need to do is I need to restrict T. And here the syntax is a little funky in Java. And so I'm just going to ask you to copy it. And it looks like that. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that the T must extend the comparable and everywhere i have the t i need to have that here i think that's basically it so that's going to be important that's going to be important i need to keep restricting my nodes to be something where i can compare one to the other see that right okay now uh before i let you go one last question I get this question a lot from my students. I'm surprised you haven't asked it. Look at this tree. Is it sorted? Okay, it's sorted. Why is it sorted? It doesn't look sorted, but if you look carefully, if I parse it in a particular way, it'll come out sorted. What way is that? In order. Look, the in order parse here will print them in perfect order. See that? So when students ask me, is it sorted? I say sort of. You see what I did there? Even if you never want to become a programmer, being able to store information in a binary search tree and retrieve it quickly is a powerful technique in whatever profession you end up in.